Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Haugen. I'm a professor of medicine and pathology at the University of Colorado School of Medicine. Um, I am a physician and a researcher here, and I'm also director of philanthropy for the Department of Medicine. I am partnering with my colleagues at CU Advancement in this Ask a Scientist program uh, through the monthly Friends Report uh, to answer your questions uh, about uh, various aspects of medicine. If you would like to send questions to us, uh, send them to advancement at cuanschutz.edu. Um, and we will get back to you with some answers. And who knows, your question may come up on the uh, Ask a Scientist session. On this specific session, the question is, is there research to support including carbon 60, which is called C60, in the diet, and can it increase longevity? The thing I do like about this question is they ask, is there research? And so asking about research is very important because that's how we learn about a lot of these potential uh, treatments. Um, and I just want to spend a minute to talk to you about research since I am a research scientist. There, in my mind, are three types of research. There's basic research, which is things like molecule development, testing in cells, in petri dishes, uh, looking at structures, a number of things like that. There is also, secondly, translational or preclinical research, and that is research in animals, animal models um, that we have uh, at here and at many other places. And then the third is clinical research. Um, and I will talk another time more in more detail about clinical research, but I think for most especially development of products or drugs that are being used by people to hopefully help them, they need to go through a rigorous process of those three types of research. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that today. Again, this topic is asking us about C60. C60 was discovered in 1985, and it is exclusively a carbon molecule, 60 carbon molecules together. They're actually in the shape of a soccer ball. And this was generated from uh, heating graphite, which can be found in pencils. And it ended up making a number of products, but this was one of those products. And interestingly, it has uses in chemistry and material sciences. It can be made into these balls or tubes, a number of different things. In medicine, it looks like there may be uses for it in drug delivery and maybe also in radiology, so imaging of patients. Uh, but what we're talking about today is could it be used itself alone as a therapeutic? And one property it seems to have is it is what's called a free radical scavenger. And that basically means that uh, free radicals, which are generated a lot of times by metabolism and by use of oxygen, which we need and we have metabolism, uh, they can be toxic, especially if they get in high levels, and they can be uh, known to age cells and age organisms like animals or people. Uh, and so the theory is that if you use this, it may gobble those free, radical, free radicals up and decrease cellular and human aging. Um, so far, there's been uh, basic research, a lot of basic research on this, on looking at the structure and how it interacts with other molecules. There has been a handful of studies in animals, and these have mainly been in mice and rats. There is some promising uh, data that it looks like it might increase the longevity in mice and rats, but so far the studies are mixed. These are usually given to older animals, so simulating giving it to, say, an adult. Uh, and again, the studies are a bit mixed, but I think there is some promise there uh, in kind of aging research. Uh, so far, there have not been human studies uh, with this, and so we don't know in humans, or there have not been primate studies in apes or chimpanzees, which sometimes happens before we do uh, human studies because they're much closer to humans than a mouse or a rat. So, so far, we only have this data that looks promising, but is a little mixed in the mouse and rat studies. Uh, there have been some studies in uh, rodent development that show that it likely is toxic in development. So obviously we would not want to consider using this in pregnant women or developing children. Um, this molecule is also quite light sensitive and can break down into different breakdown products uh, from light. 
Uh, so depending upon how it's stored, uh, you may have some of these breakdown products that have some have shown to be toxic. The other thing I guess I would caution is uh, there was one good study that basically purchased a number of uh, these of C60 from uh, these companies that are basically selling it to people uh, for use. And they're highly variable, variable. So there are some breakdown products. So I think we st still need to do some research on the potential toxicity for those. So there's some purity issues. This isn't regulated at like a drug at this point. It's uh, considered more of a supplement. Um, so again, it's a sort of a buyer beware. We have to be careful with this. And a lot of these, I always tell patients, um, is it safe? I think it likely is safe in adults, but we, I think, do need some more study. Second question is, is it effective? Don't know at this point, especially don't know in people. And then the third thing you always want to ask is, is it expensive? If it really hasn't been rigorously tested, uh, we don't know if it's effective and it might even be toxic, you definitely don't want to pay a lot of money for something like this. So in summary, this C60 is a promising molecule uh, for cellular aging and maybe even aging in animals and people. We don't quite yet know how to take it to try to reverse that, or if it does fully reverse that. Um, it does show promise. Uh, there are promising results in mice and rats, but uh, the results are also mixed. There are some studies that show it did not seem to be effective. So what I tell my patients, especially since there have been no human studies at this point, is I wouldn't recommend using this to improve longevity or slow down the aging process because we don't have enough information at this point. We really need that third, third arm of research. We've got some basic, maybe need more animal research, and then we need the uh, clinical studies in humans. So at this point, I would not recommend using it uh, as this type of a supplement. Thank you very much for uh, joining me for Ask a Scientist. Mm -hmm.